we're back, and uh, this is our fucking third attempt at this shit right here. No, actually, it's our fourth attempt, but we're fucking gonna bring it to you, and we're gonna, dude, trust me, we've been fucking trying our asses off to bring you to this video. I've already erased an hour's worth of shit. And I'm still beating myself up over it. I got black eyes right here. That's why I'm wearing my sunglasses. But, uh... We're going to check them out in the woodshed. <laughs> <laughs> no, we broke some shit down. I fucked it all up, man. I just... I hit the wrong button, and it sucks. But anyway... Yeah, Microsoft shit happens. Yeah. Man, so. Sorry, anyway, man. Get to no, it, and we're going to start off with some breaking news... Scott Coker filling in for Bjorn Rebney, or actually just taking over for Bjorn Rebney. You know, we can they can put all kinds of fucking mustard and gray poupon on it they want. His ass got fired because of Viacom looking at the bottom line. And the bottom line wasn't fucking either looking good in the future or looking good right now. So they said, I... <laughs> Uh, to Bjorn and brought in of uh, both Brian and I think a great infusion of um, of talent I guess you could say he's got connections beyond connections overseas um, he was nipping on the fucking the heels of UFC that's why I think um, it came to them eventually Zufa and UFC buying Strike Force out abolishing them and dissolving them because of what fucking Scott Coker was doing, man. He was actually making headway with fighters that are now in the UFC, like fucking Gagard Misasi, uh, Alistair Overheem, uh, Verdum, Verdum uh, Barnett, and amongst others. And they are Cormier. doing... Fuck yes, Cormier. Cormier. And they're doing great. Yeah. So it's not like he can't, he had a shit fucking organization. They knew of... This organization, they knew that it was a threat. They bought it out. They disbanded it like they did Pride. And that's why I think this is a good fucking, um, a good acquisition by Viacom to uh, get rid of uh, Bjorn and bring in Scott Coker. The, the beauty of this whole thing is uh, Bjorn and Rebney's done really good at bringing up a, uh, you know, his vision and whatnot, what people want to call it. Um, and really creating a Bellator with tournament style and all that, you know, which you can only make, you know, when you, when you get back to that early UFC, you had a tournament style. That was that's what the tournament style was. When you get uh, athletic commissions involved and all that, you know, state athletic commissions involved all around the country, you can't evolve that. It's not you the know. same thing. It's just not going to happen. So tournament style, yeah, yeah. sooner or later it's going to be done. So. Scott Coker, or excuse me, uh, Bjorn Rebbe did a great job. Did a great job bringing it up to where it, where it has gotten. But I'll tell you one thing first. When Bjorn Rebbe said yes to Viacom, he said no to his career. Because and he said yes to I sold my soul. Yep. Yeah. And uh, and whether anybody wants to agree with that, you can, you can disagree with that all day long, but what do we see what happened? Mm -hmm. That's exactly what happened. They gave him one last ditch effort. Hey, you know what? Here, here, here it is. This is your offer, and uh, Bellator wasn't doing that great. We had all the problems with fucking, uh, what's his name? Uh, not what's his name, but don't get me wrong, guys. Take it easy. But uh, um, Eddie Alvarez. Mm -hmm. Eddie Alvarez was looking to go to the UFC. UFC was ready to take on Eddie Alvarez, man. And that guy earned yeah. it. Yeah. That guy was ready to take that. It's almost like loyalty beyond loyalty, really. He earned that chance to go to the UFC, and Bjorn Rebney shut him down the best he could, and, and just made it worse. Ben Saunders came out and said, you know what, I, that's, the, that's the first reason why I was happy to leave Bellator, was because Bjorn Rebney was involved. He's like, I'm happy to see that it's not working that way now. Here I am fucking smacking the mic. Sorry about that. But um, I'm happy to see it's not working that way now. Ben Saunders is, is a quality fighter, you know what I mean? Of course, maybe he's not, not exactly what he used to be, or, you know what I mean, or whatever. We can throw whatever kind of discussion we want at it, but it just, hands down, man, it's a great decision. It's an infusion that, that was needed. It's needed, because Scott Coker single-handedly, like Dan was saying, single-handedly 
brought in, brought in all kinds of fighters. Yeah. Sure, they were ex UFC fighters, so you could say, "Oh, we brought in all these hasbens." Go so take a look at these hasbens now, guys. Yeah, you guys were saying these guys were hasbens years ago. Take a look at Fabricio Verdum. He's he's in the title shot right yeah. now. This guy's not a fucking Masasi, hasman. Masasi, okay? maybe a fight away from a title shot again. You know. Yeah, I mean, you guys really need to take a look at these some of these fighters. Alistair Overeem, a lot of people really were bathing in Alistair Overeem butter yeah. and sucking his balls all day long. Alistair Overeem probably looks the worst of them all. Yep. But he still, in the, it still has a UFC contract. Yeah, and he still came along and beat Brock Lesnar's yeah. ass down, which really proved a lot yes. of shit we were saying years ago and, as well. Not, the UFC's got a lot of old strike force guys in there. Fucking Bjorn ravney has gone. Scott Coker is bringing an infusion to Bellator that is fucking much needed, in my opinion. Yes, he fucking lived and died by a fucking turn, Grand Prix tournament that meant nothing and lasted two years. But that is something that he can say, I learned from. Because the first thing that was announced when he came back was, what? Tournament is fucking done. Right. Okay? And money, it money would have yeah. been his idea. Who it knows? probably was, because he knew. He might have said, you know what? Yes. Fuck this tournament shit. He's, we need to change this around. Yeah, and that's a good North, thing. That yeah. could, we don't know, but yeah. it could be, could have been very well it. He might have said, you know what, man? You know, because really... What does any what does any promotion have to tell you? They don't have to tell you shit. No, nope. nobody. Dana White doesn't have to tell you shit. He chooses to come out because he loves to be in the spotlight. Yeah, fucking. But for the most part, center man. They That's would rather is. have put the fucking words in his mouth than have him come out like they're doing with a fucking Scott Coker. And and you know, he's coming out and he's playing all his cards right, but. We all have to think that Scott Coker is going to come out. I think he's going to fucking make some noise. And, and I've been talking about this, like, you know, we don't know what's happening after fucking Bone Jones' fight with fucking Gus. We don't know where his contract stands. We don't know where some of these other fucking top-tier UFC fucking uh, fighters stand as of contracts. This so is an know. opportunity for yeah. Scott Coker and... Viacom, with having the backing of a Viacom, which has an inordinate amount of fucking... Uh, I don't even want to go into the amount of money that they could fucking probably spend and are willing to spend for the likes of a Bones Jones to go into a bidding war or a contract dispute and fucking making Zufa, you know, dig into their pockets. Or another guy like a Pettis or in, any of the top guys. I think fucking this this is going to be a very interesting year, year and a half situation when it comes to that. And um, if the fucking UFC doesn't um, dot their I's and, um, and cross their T's and lock up all their fucking um, top tier fighters, there might be a bidding war going on and, and they might lose some people, you know, which would just play right into what, you know, Scott Coker would fucking love, you know. You would get all kinds of rain. Any 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 top tier guy that comes over from UFC is going to be a, it's going to be a plus compared to a has been that retired and came over there. You know. <laughs> oh yeah. You know the next couple of chewing then. Um. <laughs> yep, and the dogs are fucking barking at nothing. They're alive, man. They're yep. alive. Um, good, great guard dogs, man. Good dogs. <laughs> Right off. Big props, brother. This guy rescues dogs, man. It's awesome. Hats off, brother. It's a good, good, good thing, man. They're great dogs, too. They're very nice dogs. So, with that being said, <clears throat> it's a very tough job for a Scott Coker. But you know what? Scott Coker, with his experience, is going to do a lot better than a Bjorn Rebney. Because Bjorn Rebney coming into this... Yeah, you know, probably had a little bit of money, you know, had a little bit of backing, whatever, had a couple friends, whatever. I don't I don't know what he did. But all I know is what his promotion did. And I know Viacom has got a lot of fucking money, man. Mm -hmm. And when they said when they made the deal, it was not it was not in Bjorn Rebney's favor. So Bjorn Rebney signed the dotted lines and sold basically his, and never, sold um, his ass. Sold his soul, yep. So when they when they when they brought in Scott uh, Scott Coker it's probably the same deal. It's like, you know what? We run the show. And we want you to head it up. You're the guy to head it up. It's a it's big shoes to fill. Mm -hmm. We all need to understand that. It's big shoes to fill. We all saw how Scott Coker did when it came to heading up a promotion. And 
And you were talking about all the connections he has overseas, too, which is a good fucking point, dude. He knows how to deal with Japanese people, man. Yeah. We've known this for years. He mm-hmm. is he is in really good yep. standings, standings. Yep. with Japanese people. And they love him, man. They're cool with him. You know, he's been in here since the mid-'80s, people. You, you yeah. can't deny Scott Coker mm-hmm. the reputation for... When yeah, that's that's speed on the ground talking to the people kind of thing, you know. Right. And you know, I'll tell you what, I'm not I'm not ragging on Dana. I don't know I don't I'm not gonna follow Dana. Mm. Fucking cameras follow Dana. Dana shows everything he does, but you know, I'm not out there following all of it every single minute. We'll hear about him those soon are, enough. Those are edited videos yeah. probably as well. Those are edited videos. Scott Coker is our you know, we we've seen what Scott Coker does. You know. If there's any if there's any video out there, there's no there's no editing editing to it. Mm-hmm. So Dana White likes to show a lot of video, but don't get me wrong, man. There's a lot of editing to those videos. Mm-hmm. There's certain oh, shit that yeah. he doesn't want people to see. No, there's a lot of shit that he doesn't want people to see. There's all kinds of phone conversations. Yeah, you, you can take out 15 so, minutes just by a switch of a camera angle. Exactly. Know. But when you got a Scott Coker going over to, going over to uh, G- Japan. And making deals and talking with them. Yeah, uh, he's not going over there for shits and grins. He's going over to make some deals. He's yeah. got fucking friends yeah. over there already. So there's no there's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. He's already made legs. And he's, you know, like I said, man, Strike Force was, Strike Force started out to be a kickboxing <coughs> promotion. And the, a lot of their, a lot of their deals were over in Japan, man. A yeah. lot of the guys came out of Japan. So a lot of Japan, Japanese yeah. promoters themselves. Yeah. A lot of uh, big people in Japan and a lot of fighters came out of Japan and, and really had a lot of respect for Scott Coker. Scott Coker brought a lot of people from all over the world, yeah. whether they were ex-UFC guys that yeah. still, still were yeah. very relevant, yeah. or irrelevant, yeah. excuse me, I got a couple of drinks going on, but whether they were guys who were ex-UFC fighters are still very relevant, and uh, Dana just said, well, fuck it. I just don't want to pay any attention to these guys because they're not good enough to be in my promotion. Scott Coker gave them guys respect. <clears throat> and I'm going to say right now, it's Robbie Lawler. Mm-hmm. UFC cut Robbie Lawler a long time ago. Robbie Lawler fucking mm-hmm. went to He's coming course. back and kicking some fucking ass. And Robbie probably. Lawler is fucking yeah, top. One of the top notch, top tier. One of my favorite guys today. So, what does that tell you, people? 